One of the key verses that I learned on my pathway to understand that God wants to be good is Psalm 145, 16. Mm. He opens his hand and satisfies the desires of every living thing. Yeah, That was not something I was... I just thought life was a lottery and good stuff happened to you and bad stuff happened to you and it was all the Lord and you just make the best of it and just right. move on, live just a quiet life and don't don't complain, don't explain and just get to glory. Yes. Keep your head down. Yeah. Yeah. But actually that's contrary to what the Lord's saying. Like I you know, I open my hand and I I want to satisfy the desires of your heart. Yeah. Well I was thinking about Peter, whose livelihood is being a fisherman. Yeah. And the story where he's fishing all night and he catches absolutely nothing. And then Jesus shows up and says, hey, throw that net on the other side. Mm -hmm. And there this, you know, there's this incredible catch. Like it must have been so discouraging to have fished all night. Yep. And obviously it's not just like uh, his hope or his dream to catch fish. It's his livelihood. It's, it's his necessity. necessity. Yeah. And the Lord answered that as well. Like mm -hmm. in his goodness, you know, he's like, hey, actually, let me help you out with this. I'm going to scare some fish over here to the other side of the boat, which is just laughable if you think about it. Yeah. And, you know. With that as a background, I was thinking about all the little things, not little things, all the big things that the Lord has done that stemmed from little things, like little thoughts. Yeah. I realized, like, because you were telling me about it last night, you mm -hmm. were saying, hey, like, think of some things. Yeah. And... You know, I've thought of some of the same things that, that you have written on your list, and I've, I've thought of a few others. But I realized uh, I was probably more in the other camp of hope deferred makes the heart sick. So I'm actually going to try not to ever hope or even have the little, the little, oh, it would be nice if, because then that's just an opportunity to be disappointed. It'd be better if I was just surprised or shocked by everything, which I don't think is healthy either. So my backstory was... Well, don't hope because God's not a genie. And, you know, there's a danger people could listen to this and just be like, oh, you, you just think God's a genie and he's just going to do everything you want, right. which was the background I came from. Like, hey, right. you, life is hard and God is good and that's the end of the story. Yes. Right? But you were from, oh, he might be good, but I, I can't engage with that. Yes. Uh, too, too afraid to face any other disappointment, even little ones. So better to just not. Like just, just eradicate Give me an example. that. Give me an example. Make it practical. Well, I was thinking I never, I never hoped to get married again. I was like, I'm, I'm not going to hope for that because I don't want to be disappointed. And so I would basically just put a stranglehold on my heart. Like I will, you know, I will choose not to hope. And of course, actually the Lord answered that anyway. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the only example I can think of. But I mean, I, I, that's a huge one. Yeah. That's not really a, like a little one, but well, you would have little ones when we first got married about celebrating your birthday. Yeah. You wouldn't want to celebrate your birthday. You wouldn't want to ask for gifts. Yeah. Well, yes, with good reason. <laughs> yeah. Well, talk about some of them. The, so I came from a, don't be ridiculous, this is ridiculous, and you came from a, I'm not opting into this. What, what were the ways that God broke that open for you? I don't know. I mean, I think what's, what's funny is, like, growing up, I don't remember hoping for anything that I didn't get because from like we we had enough money that you could get what you wanted you know you put your you put your Christmas list together and you got all of it kind of thing you know it was but stuff didn't meet any of the things that what my, my heart actually needed because I'm growing up in this um, really scary environment so I think partially I my heart has discounted stuff as being other than what you actually need. But sometimes my heart wants stuff, especially because I'm a gifts person, which drives me insane that I am because I don't want to be mm. a gifts person. But the Lord, even in that has answered so many times in gifts. Like, for example, I love coffee, like love coffee. Yes. And, you know, I, I'll drink a couple cups each morning. Like I, I love coffee. So I had a, like a little machine that I had to fight with all the time. Like it made espresso, but like you had to do all the things yourself and it often, you know, fell apart and we'd have to get a new part and whatever. And we're trying to make the best of it. And, and I love hosting people. We had people coming in town for a couple of weeks and my coffee maker broke 
and it was my birthday. And I was just like, Ugh. I don't remember hoping for an answer to that. But two days later, the most beautiful coffee machine is sitting wrapped on my island. And it's something like we never could have afforded, never would, I never would have like was it even in for, your budget of things that you would consider no. as a as a solution to the problem? No. You know, I would have probably like been scouring eBay for some sort of part replacement again, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and there is this thing that I, I'm sure I didn't allow my heart to hope for. But it's like the Lord goes, I know you like coffee, love. And I know you like hosting. And I know that this is distressing for you that you have these people in that love coffee and they're driving to Starbucks each morning because you can't provide it. I got this. 